Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today we're setting up the Singapore Maker Fair at the Singapore Science Center. We've got a little demo with the bus pirate connected to uh, a demo board with an I squared CEE prompt to record some data and then read it back. And then connected to that we have the logic sniffer so that we can record the data going on and show it on the laptop over here. We just set out uh, our favorite new things. So here we've got the stick of base standard PCB sizes, uh, the template, some example cases, and the magnetic scheme G case that DSM worked up, as well as a couple uh, standardized PCBs to show as an example, and a few case kits. My poor neighbors. My main thing is I, I don't make things from scratch with the stuff. I look at it and say, mm, that fits into there, and, and I don't know what I make until I've made it. Standard toys like a radio control car, so that's the original controller. And then I'm afraid I computerize it. I normally put a little microprocessor in there, normally a pick into the radio control. And then I just have a simple serial link to the computer, yeah. just via USB. And then I control it from there. What kind of pick are you using? Uh, it's kind of old fashioned, the 16F84. Oh, the classic. The classic, yeah. This, I got a thing down here which is meant to be. Accompany me when I'm doing my busking. I'm a licensed Singapore busker. So I'm just using the pot command six times over, getting a number between 0 and 255, and then deciding what to do with it. And do you have any advice for someone doing a Maker Fair for the first time? Don't feel constrained by anything. Initially, I was thinking, oh, is this stuff I've got appropriate? Anything's appropriate. So this blim is uh, special in the sense that it will be able to be controlled through commands from Twitter. Uh, these commands don't have to be phrased in a certain way. They will recognize the meaning behind the tweets rather than the syntax. Uh, this is done through natural language processing. We are actually thinking of building a third version, so you actually have a shield set on top of the Arduino Mini. So um, we've been like exploring a few possibilities. So earlier in the day, we had uh, some sort of dancing game, right? Um, that's just one of the uses um, that this bot has because it's very, very, very low voltage. It's able to go through lots of resistance. So you could hook it up to pretty much anything and it would detect it. Do you have any advice for somebody who's coming to their first Maker Faire? So, um, don't be afraid of what, what everybody else is going to bring here because what you have made is amazing in your own right, I guess. Well, we, we learned about Maker Faire because of uh, uh, publicity. Mm -hmm. And also, we in the Science Centre here, we promote innovation, creativity. And we thought the Maker Faire's, the, the, the philosophy and the spirit of Maker Faire fit what we want to do very much. And in Singapore, we are a little island with no natural resources. What makes us tick depends on what we make out of what we have. And a lot of got to do with the brain. And uh, a Maker Faire is actually a very good platform to inspire our young kids, our public, to let them see that it's possible. It is possible as an ordinary person to make something happen. Yeah, we do a lot of uh, electronics components and we supply to schools and universities in Singapore. Promotion here today on Arduino. <laughs> so you're a distributor for Digilent Seed, SparkFun, yeah. like everybody knows these names, DF Robot and yes, Metal yes. Over the World. Okay, these are only the five top suppliers I have. We have another, uh, all together we have 26 suppliers. And so, is there a lot of interest in hobby electronics in Singapore? Yeah, I think it's uh, catching up with the world. And uh, you can see this by the first Mikkel Fair we have. And hopefully next year it'll be bigger. In between talking to people, we've uh, been hacking around with the LED blocks and matrices and stuff that we bought at uh, Kobo Electronics yesterday. And so we've got this red pink one here that's the first one i'm going to try out because it's only got two wires that's pretty simple and you can see in the back there's maybe uh, uh nine leds in there and encased in some sort of resin so i've got the the bus pirate here and we've got no protection resistor that's not exactly smart but it works okay and you can see that after a second the power supply starts to overheat and shut down <laughs> it's pretty we just need a current limiting resistor in there to and we've got this one. It's an RGB matrix. I'm still trying to figure out how to work it. This little red-green one seems to have some sort of addressable system. I don't know if it's I squared C. So many LEDs and so few leads. It's got to have some like chip in there that controls it. So this is an aquaponic system. 
the word aquaponics is actually a portmanteau of aquaculture and hydroponics. Uh, aquaculture being generally known as fish farming. Hydroponics, um, everybody knows hydroponics. It's growing um, plants in water, literally. The difference with an aquaponic system and a hydroponic system is that the fish in an aquaponic system supply all the nutrients. So you don't actually go out and buy commercial nutrient solutions to put into the system. So with aquaponics, you end up with a closed loop system where the only input is actually fish food. So you feed the fish and the fish end up doing their thing in the water. All that fish waste circulates into the grow beds. The grow beds have this um, stuff called expanded clay in them. And the expanded clay creates a, a holding ground for beneficial bacteria to, uh, these are generally called nitrosomes. And these nitrosomes and some of the other beneficial bacteria break down the fish waste into nutrients that are available to the plants. I started as a hobbyist. Then uh, I go into microcontrollers. Okay, so I actually started with something like this. Mm -hmm. Then uh, my first project when I did this was actually to do a big uh, display, equalizer display, yeah. but uh, for, for discotech. So I come up with this prototype, then later I combine with some acrylic design to make a 3 by 3 meter. Okay, this is done using a, a pig chip, it's a pig 18. So basically what we have here is, we call it the angry eagles. It's like angry bird pretty much, is a playoff from that. What we're trying to do is quite simple actually, uh, use a potential meter to get some sort of voltage reading. And you know how potential meters work, you rotate it and you get different voltages. So we use a potential meter to get angle readings for our Angry Birds program up there. And we use a load cell to get the force readings. So essentially we have created our own slingshot for the Angry Birds demo. So we use a wireless data acquisition device from NI and uh, we wirelessly connect to a computer that's running LabVIEW. And if I shoot it, our user interface shoots out a bird and then crashes it and I win. It's the end of day two of the Singapore Maker Fair. Finally time to pack up and go home. I've got sore feet. We somehow lost our lapel microphone along the way. We met incredible people and had a great time. The projects here were top notch and we can't wait to come back next year. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in the workshop next week.